Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcasting to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israel accuses Iran of recruiting over 80,000 militants in Syria for an ultimate goal of confronting the Jewish state, an allegation the Islamic Republic vehemently denies. Israeli Defense Minister Avigdor Lieberman warns the Islamic Republic that if it would attack Tel Aviv, Israel will attack Tehran. A rare storm battered Israel during the past two days, leaving more than a dozen dead and many others injured. Reports of a series of cargo flies from Iran to Syria, which U.S. and Israeli intelligence officials suspect may be transporting weapons to the Assad regime and Iranian-backed militias operating in the war-torn country, have raised concerns in both Jerusalem and Washington of Iranian efforts to prepare for a direct confrontation with Israel. While arms transfers between Iran and Syria are not unusual, American intelligence is reportedly monitoring several flights of both Syrian and Iranian cargo planes that have caught their attention in light of Tehran's threats to retaliate for an alleged Israeli attack on Syria's T-4 airbase, which claimed the lives of seven Iranian members of the Revolutionary Guard's drone unit. With both Israeli and American intelligence officials indicating to TV7 close cooperation between Jerusalem and Washington on efforts to thwart Tehran's regional influence, the Islamic Republic of Iran continues to bolster forces loyal to Damascus and Shiite militias devoted to Tehran's directives unhindered. At a meeting of the United Nations Security Council, Israel's ambassador Dani Danon accused the Islamic Republic of operating military training bases close to Damascus, from where Tehran's Shiite militias, which the Israeli diplomat claimed numbered over 80,000 militants, are trained. We are presenting this image to the world so you can understand the depth of Iran's involvement in Syria. What you can see here is Iran's central induction and recruitment center in Syria. There are over 80,000 Shia militants in Syria under Iranian control. It is at this base, just over five miles from Damascus, where they are trained to commit acts of terror in Syria and across the region. In response, Iran's first counselor to the world body categorically rejected the Israeli allegations as baseless and a sheer fabrication, while emphasizing that Iran's military presence in Syria came at the request of the Syrian government in Damascus, which deems the Islamic Republic's presence in the war-torn country legal and legitimate. Iran advisory presence in, in Syria is at the request of the Syrian government and legitimate to assist the Syrian government to fight alt and ultimately eliminate all terrorist groups, especially Daesh and other individuals, groups, undertakings and entities associated with them, and restoring the unity of their country and in achieving a political solution. We categorically reject the Israeli allegations as baseless and sheer fabrication. The UN Security Council meeting came as Israeli Defense Minister Avigdor Lieberman arrived in Washington for a scheduled meeting with his American counterpart, Secretary of Defense James Mattis. During the meeting, the American top defense official responded to a reporter's question about Israel's assessment regarding the aim of Iran's arms shipments. Do you agree with the Israeli assessment that the weapon shipments from Iran to Syria are for the purpose of striking Israel? I can't think of any other purpose for them right now. Secretary Mattis also took the opportunity to refer to the announcement by Russia of its intention to deliver the advanced S-300 surface-to-air missile systems to Syria, warning Moscow that its decision would be a tragedy for efforts to establish peace in the war-torn country. Ahead of the meeting between Lieberman and Mattis, the London-based Saudi-owned newspaper I Love released an interview with the Israeli Defense Minister, who warned the Islamic Republic that if it would attack Tel Aviv, Israel will attack Tehran and destroy every Iranian military outpost in Syria threatening Israel. While Minister Lieberman emphasized that Israel does not seek war with anyone, it will not tolerate an Iranian presence in Syria, whatever the cost may be.
Lieberman further clarified his threat, underlining that every military outpost in Syria in which Iran seems to be trying to dig in militarily, Israel will destroy, while noting that ongoing talks with Moscow would prevent any accidental clashes between Israeli and Russian forces. Meanwhile, in Tehran, Iran's Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei has called on Muslim nations to unite against the United States, declaring the Islamic Republic would never yield to bullying. Iran's Supreme Leader further criticized U.S. President Donald Trump for saying earlier this week that some countries in the Middle East wouldn't last a week without American protection, a statement Khamenei said was a humiliation for Muslim nations who must respond by standing up to arrogance. مسلمان ها باید در مقابل استکبار بیستند در مقابل زورگویی آمریکا و بقیه زورگوهای عالم مسلمان ها باید بیستند The comments by the Iranian Supreme Leader were made just two weeks before President Donald Trump is due to decide whether to pull the United States out of the multinational agreement with Iran that has limited the Islamic Republic's nuclear program in exchange for relief from crippling international sanctions. Negotiating teams from the United States, Britain and France, as well as Germany, are seeking to formulate amendments to the deal ahead of Washington's declared deadline on May 12th that would satisfy the American leader to preserve the Iranian deal, a Western attempt vehemently rejected by Russia, which emphasizes that no changes will be accepted to the multinational agreement. У нас все это вызывает серьезную обеспокоенность. Речь конкретно идет о последних высказываниях президентов США и Франции относительно совместного всеобъемлющего плана действий по иранской ядерной программе. Россия неоднократно заявляла, что возможности для некого переголосования по данному документу, внесения в него изменений или дополнений мы не видим. Moscow continues to warn the international community that pulling out of the Iranian nuclear deal would undermine attempts to strike an agreement with North Korea. This position, however, was played down by the U.S. Secretary of Defense, Jay Mattis, who stressed during a committee hearing in Washington that an agreement with North Korea, which has systematically broken international treaties, cannot be a factor in assuring the stability of the Middle East. I also recognize that some people uh, point out that uh, this could impact on the North Korea uh, negotiations, but I would say in that case, in light of Kim's family and himself breaking every international treaty, every agreement they've ever made, whether it be with the Republic of Korea or with the United States, I'm less concerned with that ripple effect right now. I think we need to focus on what is in the best interest of Middle East stability and the threat that Iran poses now back to Israel, where a rare storm battered the country in the past two days, leaving more than a dozen dead and many others injured. The severest incident occurred in Israel's southern Negev Desert, not far from the Dead Sea, where flash floods swept away a group of teenagers that were on a school trip. The teenagers from a pre-military academy school in Tel Aviv were on a two-day bonding trip to the southern Israeli Tzafit stream in the Arava region, where flash floods swept away 10 out of the group of 25. Search and rescue teams, police and IDF helicopters scrambled to locate the group as heavy rainfalls drenched the region, pulling from the treacherous streams 10 teenagers and rescuing 15 others. Heavy rains flooded roads across other parts of the country, stranding cars and causing heavy traffic. In some places, people reported seeing hail as big as ping pong balls. Up to 150 millimeters of rain fell between Thursday evening and Friday morning alone. Thank you for watching us. Praying for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. I'm Jonathan Hassan. Have a Erev Tov and Shabbat Shalom. We will see you again on Monday at the same time.